Alrighty guys, our coverage of the Dragon Empires is coming to a close. We've only got a few regions left. Literally, it's just four. So we're gonna dive right in on it today. This episode of the Dragon Empires, a five minute tour, is gonna be all about the Dark Lands under the Dragon Empires. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, remember to hit that like and subscribe button today. This episode of the Dragon Empire is a five minute tour was brought to you in part by a man who needs to watch this video. Tiki through the Artificer, you'll see why in a sec. Thanks for your help, brother. Now, here we go. The Dark Lands of Tian Sha are not inhabited by Drow, sorry, Tiki, and Druger, and there's no quest for Sky that sent the dwarves up. No, instead it was Jinnin and the elves, but follow this card right up here, we'll tell you all about that one. Yet, the fundamental nature of the Darklands, remember, that's Pathfinder's equivalent of the Underdark, big giant dungeon under the ground, remains unchanged. We've still got three specific zones, Narvoth, Sekamina, and Orv. If those don't mean anything to you, follow this card right up here, we'll teach you all about the Darklands. But now here's a fun fact for everyone who's watching or playing in A Tale of Three Dragons, hey follow this card right here. If you want to watch our patron live play, while entrances to the Darklands can be found throughout Tian Sha, three of them are particularly notorious. The Ghost Path is a series of ledges and caverns around the dormant caldera of the extinguished volcano known as Mount Kumijinja. Yeah, that's where the monastery was set. It still is set in our patron game, where the party's from. Yeah, and one of them's a drow noble, and the other one's a rat folk, which is also from the Darklands, and I've made a flavor fail. Forgive me, gentlemen. We'll tie it in somehow. Anyway, this immense shaft ends in the only region in Sekamina which is exposed to the light of the sun. Literally, it's just a volcano with the sun shining down on it. That's sweet. The clicking caverns on the border between Zahoy and Nagajur also connect to the Darklands, and that's known because the periodic armies of strange clockwork warriors that often emerge from the caves to raid both nations. These, in addition to under the elven city of Ayajinbo and Jinin, are the best known Narvath complexes to surface dwellers. But there's a particularly fungus infested cavern dominated by mycelloids, and similar horrors known to those who dwell in Sekamina, because these mycelloids often raid into the deeper darkness. Oh, oh, I see the pun there. <laughs> Also, whispers of a second hobgoblin nation ruled by the denizens of the underground city of Rock Lo persist as well, with repeated entrances linking Shen Wang and Kaoling alike. Now, while the regions of Sekamina below Tian Sha are too numerous to properly catalog, the simplest approach to these regions focuses on the five most dominant nations found in the Twisted Caverns. Under much of northern Minkai and the Forest of Spirits lies the spiral shaped city of Shirogoku which is a twisted mockery of the lands above where the Oni rule over enslaved humans bred like cattle. As might be expected, the deep roots of the Wall of Heaven hide significant caverns as well, many of which are infested and inhabited by Cave Giant! You make weapon for Cave Giant! Oh, I miss those days. One of my favorite giants legitimately bought a mini at Gen Con because of an episode of Lord the Gallery. Yeah, you know what? Screw it. Follow this card right here. Go watch a really old game with my friends and soon-to-be ex-wife. Oh, I'm nostalgic now. I miss you, Kane. Aww. Anyway, in addition, the so-called Empire of Rats, sprawling under central Tian Sha, where humanoid rats have warred amongst themselves for ages. However, the most storied region in Sekamina is likely the clockwork necropolis of Pan Mahjong, which is again under Nagajor and Zahoy, the source of the strange clockwork inhabitants of this constantly shifting and transforming necropolis is unknown, but the fact that the sadistic flesh-eating spirits of the forgotten race that built it now possess and haunt the same constructs they once used as slaves has inspired bards and nightmares alike for generations. Now, much like on the other side of the world, there's not a lot known about the vaults of Orv, although whispers of miniature post-apocalyptic worlds inhabited by malformed giants, oceans of sentient oil that slobbers and gibbers, clippeth infested regions of the abyss, and the unknowable monstrosities from beyond the dark tapestry are recurring themes that truly we kind of just see all over these places. Now, this is all relevant knowledge to me that honestly I probably should have looked at for a little while. Truth be told, A Tale of Three Dragons was kind of meant to be a one-on-one -on -one game, as 
Chase, before he had to leave us, showed up by himself. Just one Azamar samurai monk. I'm like, okay, sure. And then suddenly here's more patrons. But you know, Tale of Three Dragons is not quite over at all, and we definitely have more than enough time to go down into the spooky caverns of the Dark Lands. And if I was to play a character from the Dark Lands in Tian Sha, if not just being an elf from Jinin, honestly, I have to look no further than the inspiration brought to me by Ross and Tigi playing exceptional characters, eventually being two people in a party. Do you know how good the roleplay has to be when there's just two of you? Seriously, A plus you two. But what do you guys think about the Dark Lands in Tian Sha? Have we adventured here? Have we played Darklands races in Tian Sha? And honestly, what do you guys want to see next in the Friday slot? Let me know in the comments. We'll keep that conversation going. But that's all we got for today. The next episode of the Dragon Empire is a five minute tour where we're going to cover Shang Wang pending, you know, requests drops next Friday.